And I guess it was a Zoom meeting, but still you have like yeah. the, the leader of it and then all this collective believing, like everybody's like supposed to be believing yeah. in the same way. You know, you know what? I kind of, I, I think it was contextual because I was at a, you know, I was supposed to be chaperoning a group of kids at the time. We went to the skating rink. Okay. I logged into oh. this meeting because I thought it was supposed to be. It was a mandatory meeting, so I was was multitasking, which is what you do. So, like, but Thriller is, is playing do. on the on yeah, the yeah. Like, so rink. we're wandering around Bryant Park. I I have a mask on. It's askew. The sunlight's behind me. I'm looking at this little phone. I can't even see anyone on the phone. It's like a lot of glare, but I'm kind of trying to type in the chat. So I didn't have that experience of like the Panopticon where everyone's looking yeah. at you. If I was at home with all those people, maybe I wouldn't have said a damn word. But it was because it was everyone was shrunken onto this little device, and I was feeling, you know, just my. I was like, "Oh, you're all just so small in my hand." Yeah, you know? like, like that kids like, in the hall skit, yeah. like I'm squishing your head. I'm yeah, squishing. <laughs> there was some of that. I think that, and I mean, and I can't imagine what I must have. I mean, I must have looked a little frightening to some of the kids. To be honest, it's like, like towering over. Them. Yeah, yeah, like this guy lumbering this around. Big white he, man with the, yeah, with the sun. the mask askew. He likes like what is white? What's a white feeling? You know, I'm and I can I can I can see. I mean, I don't think it's harmful. I mean, they said that that was harming people. I'm not harming people, yeah. but it, but I could see the comic aspects of my what I must have looked like. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, and I, I think hmm. based on what the facilitator told me later. Two days later, there was a meeting about the meeting for for white identifying faculty. There were segregated meetings about to process the segregated meeting. Anyway, she said, you know, she she said she came to the meeting to her credit and said, you know, I didn't think that what Paul said was antagonistic or you know, I thought I felt his questions were in good faith. He was, you know, and I she said that she decided to sort of spend more time on it because it was it was a chance to have an authentic discussion. Hmm. And, you know, I, that was my impression. It was good to hear her say that. Now, she did have qualms about, you know, race, uh, my questioning of race as a, you know, as a real thing, as a true thing, which I think that they, they kind of confuse reality and truth there in an interesting way. But I, my, my point was that why hmm. should I identify with a falsehood? If race is a falsehood, why should I identify with it? Um, and that's that is the that is the greatest of heresies. You cannot question, um, you know, race is a social construct. But since racism is real, then we must identify with mm-hmm. it. We must. Uh, and we denial must, denialism of racism is right. the most racist thing. Right. Possible. Exactly. Yeah. Now I don't deny racism, but I will deny the truth of race. I will deny the meaning that's that that it has. I mean, I think if you. If you define yourself as how other people see you, if 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 racism is the consequence of a lie and a falsehood, well then to define yourself by a falsehood is 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 a re a recapitulation, a reification of that reification, falsehood. Yeah. So yeah. I yeah, so I, I took issue with that. That made its way out of the chat. People heard about it. They felt harmed. I mean they they got upset. And, yeah. and then here you, I am. You attack that worldview. You attack the yeah. ground, the floor of being. They're right, the same. Right. I don't know how Heidegger yes, speaks, but absolutely right. Yeah, that the the the, same, the Dasein, whatever. Um, and yeah, that's that is you know from cynical theories. Doesn't don't they make the point that like that was the that is the nub of that's the hub around which. You, yeah. you can you can instantiate and give grounding to the postmodern ideas, its identity. And so, you know, that to me, if I was going to give advice to any intellectual movement to marshal your forces and shoot at that exhaust port on the Death Star, I would say hit identity and never stop and just pound away at it. Because hmm. um, if you if you if you blow that up, you blow up the whole house of cards. And so, you know, what I my my thinking on this is is. You know, neither a person who happens to be black nor a person who is black, but a person who happens to be seen as black. So, like, you're if you are somebody, you are the you are a person, you are an individual, and that indiv- you don't have to. You can you can address bias by you know that other people feel towards you, 
without having to identify as that thing yourself. I think we need a deracialization. We need a de-identification movement with respect to race in this country. That is, that to me is, mm-hmm. you know, I think the way. Now, that's just me, one white guy talking. But uh, yeah, well, and you're talking to another white guy, so I'm just compounding yeah. your fragility here. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As I'm sure if the right people find that, they've already made that comment before they got sure. to this part. Of and and me being black wouldn't save me anyway, so why do I, you know, yeah. who cares? No, so yeah, I as well you know what, what I right. want anyway. So <laughs> it's not like my whiteness is, is any worse than my blackness would be if I, have, if I have whiteness in me. So 